Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into things. A podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 146. Loneliness and Social Isolation. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my refreshed and energized co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? Doing okay. So we are back from an unintentional extended hiatus. We'll call it our spring break, uh, because spring break actually happened during our hiatus, so you had gotten sick, just a cold, nothing serious, and then you had promptly gotten me sick. So that killed two episodes, and then I was down for two weeks or so. Then you were on vacation for spring break, so we didn't do anything then, and now we're back, and we're getting back into the swing of things. So we had four weeks off, I think. I don't remember. That was quite some time. So you should be very refreshed and energized at this point. Yeah. Anything exciting going on this week at school or anything? Uh, take your kid to work days tomorrow. That's always exciting. Who are you going to work with? No one. No one, huh? Okay. Not that exciting then. You did have your uh, band banquet yesterday. Yeah. How'd that go? Pretty good. Anything exciting come out of that? I got a bunch of pastries that I brought home. Gotta love the pastries. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. So for teens, for many teens, their social world is everything to them. Who they hang out with, the kids they relate to, and the extracurricular activities they participate in all help the teenager to define a sense of self. Loneliness and social isolation are real issues for teens even without having to live through a pandemic. But add to the required isolation associated with a pandemic on top of the normal sense of loneliness teens can feel, and it quickly becomes overwhelming. In today's episode of Insights into Teens, we're going to take a look at what causes loneliness and and social isolation, the physical and mental health impacts on our teens, and techniques to help combat these issues. But first, I would like to invite you, uh, our viewing and listening audience, to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of all of our podcasts listed as Insights into Teens. You can also find video and audio versions listed as Insights into Things. We can be found on most podcast providers such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and TuneIn. I'd also like to invite you to give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us your show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can message us on Twitter at insights underscore things. It's also worth noting that uh, as of this broadcast, Uh, We do send our live stream out on our Twitter feed as well now, too, as well as all the other feeds that we send out. So you can watch us live on Twitter now. You can also get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or as always, you can get links to all those and more on our official website at insights into things.com. Ready to get into it? Yep. Here we go. So the the research you did for this episode came from Cigna.com. And while 
Their social world is important to many teens. Not all teens are outgoing and social by nature. Some might be more introverted, and some may have low self-esteem. Some adolescents suffer from social anxiety, which can keep them trapped in isolation due to the irrational fear of being ridiculed or harshly judged while in a public setting. When a teenager struggles socially, it can result in feelings of profound loneliness. As a result, they may become depressed, which can then cause a cascade of other symptoms that only add to their suffering. By understanding more about the causes of teenage loneliness, parents can take steps to help their child overcome obstacles and improve social functioning. So, what is loneliness and social isolation? So, loneliness is the feeling of being alone regardless of the amount of social contact. Social isolation is a lack of social connections. Social isolation can lead to loneliness in some people, while others can feel lonely without being socially isolated. Short-term bouts of loneliness can occur to many people at some point in their lives. These types of feelings are typically brief and not considered chronic. However, when feelings of loneliness and isolation worsen and continue long-term, there may be more serious signs and symptoms to be aware of and, and steps you can take to help deal with chronic loneliness. Chronic loneliness occurs when feelings of loneliness and uncomfortable social isolation go on for a long period of time. It's categorized by constant and un unrelenting feelings of being alone, separated or divided from others, and an inability to connect on a deeper level. It can also be accommodated by deeply rooted feelings of inadequacy, poor self-esteem, and self-loathing. Ongoing loneliness can afflict even the most seemingly outgoing person. Being the life of the party doesn't necessarily include someone from exclude someone from being chronically lonely. This type of chronic or long-term loneliness can eventually impact all areas of your life. So, have you experienced loneliness in your life? <clears throat> I'd say I have, yeah. And is that something that, obviously during the pandemic, it's kind of hard to avoid that. Um, obviously, social isolation is something that's kind of been forced on us at this point in time. Was the loneliness the result of the pandemic, or was it under different circumstances? I mean, I kind of felt lonely before the pandemic when I realized a lot of my friends were either moving away or I'd get in fights with some of them. Um, so I felt lonely before then. Um, and at the start of the pandemic, I really didn't feel all that lonely because I'm naturally an introvert, and it wasn't as hard on me until... It started going on for over a year at this point, over multiple years, and it started finally hitting me that I really didn't get to interact with people due to the pandemic, and I kind of was held back from it. So it sounds like the, the root cause of the loneliness you've described has been having a social setting and then having elements of that social setting removed without your control. Is that a fair assessment? Probably. So do you consider yourself a social person? With certain people, yes. Other people, not really. Most, like, if you're a complete stranger, probably not. Um, if you're someone I've already gotten to know, then yeah. So what is a factor that, that plays into whether or not you get to know someone? Um... <clears throat> I guess a lot of it depends if I can relate to that person or if the person comes up and talks to me or if I feel that I kind of want to talk to this person because I see that they're interested in something I'm interested in. And there's a few factors that really determines if I really decide to get to know someone. Are you typically the type of person who would initiate that contact or are you introverted to the point that Someone else has to initiate that contact before you reciprocate. Most of the time, people normally would in, would ha other people would initiate it. Well, sometimes I would initiate it if I felt 
like it. Okay. Now, is your hesitation a matter of trust in the other person, or is it a matter of comfort in expressing yourself openly like that? Probably more of the second, but I can definitely see the trust also being a factor. Yeah, because, I mean, any time that you have to to approach someone that you're not already familiar with or comfortable with, you, you have to kind of open yourself up a little bit, and that can be very scary and very uncomfortable for people. Or do you consider yourself lonely at the moment? I mean, not really. I have people that I talk to on a daily basis, so... Maybe not. So what do you what do you think for you at least? And and it doesn't have to mean it's the solution for everyone, but for you, what solves that loneliness? Is it finding new friends? Is it reconnecting with existing friends? Is it just a social environment? Is it talking on the phone? What is it that solves that loneliness feeling for you? I guess it would be just talking to the people I know right now, f- forming stronger bonds and such. Okay. So there are other things. There's a lot of things that can cause loneliness. So what are some of the things that can cause teen loneliness? Moodiness is a given in teens for a variety of understandable reasons. These mood swings can often result in feelings of loneliness. Some teens, however, may like holding up in their rooms. These adolescents may be loners, preferring time alone to spending their spare time with peers. Some teens are more studious and tend to gravitate towards solitude where they won't be distracted from their work. Others may have solitary hobbies, such as creating art or writing, which results in reduced social time. Let me ask you that. You're an artist. You write, you you produce movies, you draw. Does your hobbies, do your hobbies contribute to that chance of loneliness? Are they a factor in it at all? I mean, like, I found that I, in certain ways, I've been able to use my art in social scenarios in order to relate to other people, but taking the time to do it for the most part, I don't really do it in front of people or with people, and I kind of do it in my spare time, so maybe it could be a benefactor of loneliness, but I've also been able to connect with people with art, so kind of a midway streak. So your art has been a way for you to kind of, I guess, break the ice, you know, express yourself to other people. Yeah. But you don't do art in a social environment. Yeah. I got you. That makes sense. When a teen exhibits a distinct shift in their personality, going from a friendly social person to being withdrawn and isolated, it's a cause for concern. There are a variety of factors that might contribute to teenage loneliness, including social media. Ironically enough, (laughs) by its definition, you think it wouldn't, but with more social time spent interacting through phone apps, the result is a more superficial connection with others. The less you're connected with human beings in a deep, empathic way, the less you're really getting the benefits of social interaction. What else do we have? There's also being bullied. Teens that are the target of bullies may naturally tend to avoid re-expressing these distressing situations at school functions. Bullying and social shaming can also be played out on social media, further marginalizing the teen. There's also relationship problems. They may be socially awkward, lacking the skills to connect with peers. They may have issues with conflict resolution or anger management that results in other teens avoiding them, leaving them with with few friends. Low self-esteem or lack of confidence can contribute to problems relating to others. And depression, which any of those things can certainly lead to. Teens that suffer from depression will tend to withdraw socially. As the teen succumbs to depression, they may sleep more, self-isolate, and experience more fatigue, social anxiety. You know, these are a lot of a lot of these things are things that we've talked about on the podcast. Some teens struggle with intense feelings of fear and dread around being criticized by their peers. This anxiety will often result in isolating behaviors. 
The teen wants to see their friends, but cannot bear the thought of possibly being the object of ridicule, so they just stay home. And the last one they talk about here is body image issues. Some teens may experience body dysmorphia, or the irrational criticism of their body shape or appearance. The teen may have an exaggerated view of their perceived imperfections or flaws, which can result in isolating behaviors. So we have a fairly extensive list of possible causes here. Do any of these, or have any of these, do you think played a factor in the loneliness that you've experienced in the past? Some of them do. Um, Social media, not really, because I don't really use social media. Good for you. It's it's a cesspool. (laughs) Yeah, might even need to do an entire podcast entirely (laughs) just on that. Um, being bullied, I've never really been bullied. That's good. Directly, so don't really have that problem. Relationship problems? Mm, I have noticed that I do have a lack, um, I tend to lack confidence in most social situations, and my self-esteem seems to take a complete nosedive during those situations, so... And that's fairly common in teens. Um, I don't really have anger management issues. I'm decent with conflict resolution, so, um, and, I mean, I'm kind of socially awkward, but I do have decent skills for the most part, just I lack the confidence to initiate most conversations, and my self-esteem normally just is like, you don't deserve to talk to these people, they, they don't want to talk to you, you know, that kind of stuff. And you know, it's funny, one of the things that really helps to overcome that sort of hesitation is practice. The more you step out of that shell and into that uncomfortable zone of socializing, the easier it gets. It's it's like riding a bike. You know, you may fall off a couple times and skiing your knee, but if you keep getting back on it and keep doing it, before long it's second nature to you. How about depression? Do you suffer from depression, do you think? Not that I know of. Okay. And I think we've discussed that and and you didn't fit the symptoms that are typical. Yeah. Social anxiety? A little bit? Mm, Yeah. That might be a factor. Uh, Body image issues, we... Our last podcast was on... We just covered that. (laughs) And I don't think I really have too many body image issues that would put me more at like loneliness like whenever i do think these people don't want to talk to me i'm just annoying them it's not really relating to the fact of how i look because i would like to think that people don't really have you know body standards unfortunately you know we live in a society where that is a thing but you know i like to see at least the best in people who i don't know which like They don't care how I look. They just think I'm annoying them because I contend to probably, I'm just annoying them as a person. Okay. Well, that's certainly one way to look at it. So Mm. it sounds like uh, you might be hit or miss on a couple of these. Yeah. So we're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the signs and symptoms of teen loneliness. We'll be right back. All right. seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com.
Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about loneliness and social isolation. And now we're going to delve into the signs and symptoms of loneliness. So chronic loneliness symptoms and signs can differ depending on who you are and your situation. If you constantly feel some or all of the following, you may be dealing with chronic loneliness. One of these is the inability to connect... To ne- uh, Let me start over again. One of these is the inability to connect with others on a deeper, more intimate level. Maybe you have friends and family in your life, but engagement with them is at a very surface level. Your interaction doesn't feel connected in a way that is fulfilling, and this disconnection seems never-ending. Also, you have no close or best friends. You have friends, but they're casual friends or acquaintances, and you feel you can find no one who truly gets you. You may also experience an overwhelming feeling of isolation regardless of where you are and who's around you. You can be at a party surrounded by dozens of people, and yet you feel isolated, separate, and disengaged. At work or in school, you may feel alienated and alone. Um, The same thing on a bus, train, or walking down a busy street. You're surrounded by people, but you still feel like you're isolated and by yourself. It's as if you're in your own unbreakable bubble. You also may experience negative feelings of self-doubt and self-worth. Does it feel like you're always less than enough? These feelings, long-term at least, are another possible symptom of chronic loneliness. When you try to connect or reach out, is it not reciprocated? You're not seen or heard? Do you experience exhaustion and burnout when trying to engage socially? If you're dealing with chronic loneliness, trying to engage and be social with others can leave you feeling exhausted. Continued feelings of being drained can lead to other issues like sleep problems, a weakened immune system, a poor diet, and more. Now, it's funny that they mention that because not being a particularly social individual myself, I find social interaction tends to be stressful and exhausting to me, which I think is probably one of the reasons why I'm not social nor does it bother me that i'm that social but like when i'm in a social environment i just find it exhausting to to have to maintain conversations with a group of people um part of it's my hearing too we've talked about this in the past where i have a difficult time uh in crowds with my hearing i have a difficult uh, time discerning individual conversations everything sort of blends together for me So it requires a tremendous amount of effort on my part to maintain a conversation. Like if I'm at a a party or at a bar or something like that, and there's a large group of people and there's a lot of noise, and I'm trying to have a conversation with one person. This is why I don't like going to dinner at, at loud places. It's a very difficult situation for me because I can't hear it very well. How about you? Do you experience any of these symptoms, do you think? Um, well... I don't think I, I mean, like, I connect with you guys on a decently intimate level. Um, I mean, we have the podcast, so. Sure, yeah. Um, at least it's with you guys, and I have a deep connection with some of my friends, so I do think I have close friends, at least, and I consider most of my friends to be my best friends, even though, like, I know that best friends is, like, a term only used for, like, oh, this is for one person, like, this is your bestest friend, and I'm like, no, I can have multiple best friends. Why not? Sure, why not? Um, Overwhelming feeling of isolation, regardless of where you are and who's around. Yeah, kind, yeah, that, that happens. Um, okay. At the band w- banquet specifically, like, I was sitting at a table with a bunch of people, but I still kind of felt socially isolated. Because, like, they all had com- one-off conversations with each other, and I was kind of just there. Okay. How about feelings of self-doubt or self-worth? Yeah, I do kind of have that. Like, 
sometimes I feel as though I don't entirely have a presence anywhere. Okay. And I can certainly see that as a symptom. And I'm not really in existence or no one really acknowledges how about, the, how about the exhaustion aspect of things? Do you get exhausted or do you find it exhausting or, or tiresome to, to try to be social? I mean, with some people, kind of, which is why I don't really socialize with those people. Okay. Um, I can see there's a lot of people that, that, <laughs> that have that effect on me, too, and I try to avoid them. Um, but, like, even with some of my close friends, I'll come up with topics and then, like, when I'm on the phone with my one friend, we'll just sit in silence for a few minutes because neither of us can come up with something to talk about. But there are times that you could talk for hours with your friends, too. True. Okay, so it sounds like you may have some of these symptoms, so there might be a little loneliness that's still creeping into the picture there. So why don't you tell us how loneliness affects your mental health? So long-term feelings of loneliness can affect your health in many ways. For example, chronic loneliness can drive up cholesterol levels in the body. Cholesterol is a hormone... Cortisol. Cortisol levels. Cortisol? Cholesterol is a whole different thing. Fine. F imagine I said... You could just re-say it. It's okay. Okay. For example, chronic loneliness can drive up... Cortisol? Cortisol. Cortisol can drive up cortisol levels in the body. Cortisol is a hormone that your body creates when under stress. Over time, hi higher cortisol levels can lead to in inflammation. inflammation, excess weight gain, insulin re resistance, mm -hmm. problem problems concentrating, and more. Yep. <laughs> and more. Yeah, you got the more right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> If left unchecked, these chronic loneliness symptoms can put you at a greater risk for more serious medical and emotional problems, including depression, sleep disorders, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, mental health and emotional problems, and substance use. There's even the possibility that chronic loneliness and the health risks that come with it could shorten one's lifespan. If you think you're suffering with long-term long feelings of loneliness, talk to your doctor or a therapist. So all those things are, are bad, obviously. But what does it do to your brain? Because we've already talked about several uh, emotional and mental things that this might, might do. So research shows that chronic loneliness can have a significant impact on your overall health, including your brain health. Some studies even suggest that there may be a link between loneliness and an increased risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Long-term feelings of loneliness and social isolation can also reduce cognitive skills, such as the ability to concentrate, make decisions, problem-solve, and even change negative self-beliefs. And it ultimately can lead to depression. And I think really the, the conclusion of the health impacts here kind of is human beings are social animals. And even people like me who I don't particularly yearn for social interaction, there's benefits from it. And you may not necessarily acknowledge those benefits. You may not recognize those benefits. But they're there, and they're, they're clinically proven. You know, human beings are not built to be isolated on their own. Uh, we're pack animals, say. So there's always been some social element. And when that social element is there and it's working, your body generates positive chemicals, positive hormones and it operates at a different level your brain operates at a different level and when there's an overall lack of that it's almost like dieting right so you want to have a balanced diet if you have too much of one thing you know if you have too many carbs and and not enough protein then it's bad for your body social interaction is kind of the same way you know you have to have a balanced diet of social interaction Otherwise, you suffer from loneliness, and the loneliness has this detrimental physical and mental effect on you. 
because human beings are just designed to be around other people. Your thoughts? Yeah, that that is pretty much what to gain from this. It's because we've it's our natural instinct and the whole point uh one of the biggest attributes of us is that we're social creatures and if we aren't put in social situations that can damage us at this point since we've developed it for so long it can genuinely have damaging effects and a lot of it's kind of for survival purposes absolutely even if it's not like the primitive versions of oh we have to stick together and kill this thing or it's going to kill us it's a lot more emotional and still very physical but not in the ways that it used to be um, but it's still very psychological. It can still have damaging effects, and it even stated that it can shorten your lifetime if it gets to a serious point. Yeah, yeah that's a very good point. You know, this is it's prehistoric. It's it's built into us genetically from the time that you know we were cavemen and we had this, you know, hunt in packs in order to survive, and it was a defensive mechanism. And through generations and generations that defensive mechanism became something that we were dependent on for our, our mental and physical wellness it's evolution it's a wonderful thing isn't it i know thank you charles darwin <laughs> so anyway we're going to take our last break and then we're going to come back and we'll talk a little bit about who's most at risk and then some tips for dealing with loneliness we'll be right back all righty Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about loneliness and social isolation. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that. Um, now we're going to talk about who's most at risk. So chronic or long-term loneliness can afflict all types of people. It's easy to assume that someone who's naturally shy and introverted might be most at risk, but I'll but outgoing, type A personalities can also suffer from chronic loneliness, even though they may appear to be the life of the party. This type of loneliness is not exclusive to any one personality type. For some people, chronic loneliness may become a side effect of a medical or emotional problem, including those dealing with the following issues. Substan substance use, depression or bipolar disorder, a serious illness or disease, some mild forms of autism such as Asperger's syndrome, dementia and Alzheimer's, and sexual orientation issues. All of these issues could also lead to long-term feelings of loneliness and isolation. Make sure your doctor, therapist, or other medical provider knows how you're feeling emotionally. And then that brings us to... What can we do about this? So here are some tips for dealing with loneliness. If you are dealing with feelings of loneliness that just don't go away, consider these tips. The first tip they give is to talk to your doctor, a therapist, or other healthcare professional. A uh, chronic illness isn't limited to feelings of social isolation and... Alienation? Alienation from others. It's often tied to 
ongoing and deeply rooted negative feelings about yourself that can eventually lead to other medical and emotional problems. Let someone know what's going on. You could also engage with other people in a positive, healthy way. Even though it may be difficult, try making the effort to connect with others. Volunteering, hobby clubs, workout groups, and other opportunities can help boost self-esteem and provide a safe and satisfying way to connect with others. You can also get some exercise and sunlight. Getting active and out in the sunshine can help elevate endorphins and serotonin. These brain hormones can boost mood, help improve sleep, and make people feel happier. Find a support group, especially if chronic loneliness is a side effect of some other issues you might be dealing with, such as substance abuse, loss of a loved one, loneliness from a divorce or breakup, or chronic and isolating illness. Receiving support and encouragement from others who may share similar feelings could help ease symptoms of chronic loneliness. If you're dealing with long-term loneliness, that kind, the kind that doesn't go away, talk to your doctor or another healthcare provider so they can help. Chronic loneliness is not just about feeling alone. If left unchecked, it can put you at risk for serious physical and emotional issues. Now, that's all kind of the clin clinical uh, antiseptic descriptions that we were able to get from our uh, research that you did, which you did a very good job on. But speaking from a personal perspective, I think everyone at some point in time, and usually many times in their life, experiences some form of loneliness. Uh, and, it, and it can be brought on by a lot of different things. You know, when... Uh, my mom passed away. I went through a real significant period of loneliness. I went through a depression. Um, you, know, you lose your job. You know, I went through a divorce. These are all things that contributed to feelings of loneliness. And even simpler things, like if mommy and I get into an argument for something, you know, and she gets mad at me, there's a feeling of loneliness there. Um, so it, it's... It's all kinds of things. Sometimes it's big things. Sometimes it's little things. Sometimes it's things you don't have control over. You know, what are, what are some of the things like you, you, we've talked about friends moving away. Like, how does that make you feel if, if you're, you know, you had a, a close friend that literally lived right next door and she moved away. Now she didn't move too far away, but she moved far enough away that you don't have very frequent interactions anymore. How did that make you feel from a loneliness standpoint? Well, um, I did feel a little more isolated from her. Um, we had a whole thing before the pandemic where I would basically just walk up to her house, hope that her car was like her parents were home and she was home, uh, basically ring their doorbell and I'd go in and play with um, and just, like, hang out for a few hours. Um, now I kind of have to plan it in advance and actually get Mommy to drive me over as opposed to, oh, I'm ready, I can go and just see her and such. So you that relationship, that friendship is still there. It's just not as convenient as it was. I guess, yeah. But was there any other kind of replacement that that came into play there? Did you become friends with anybody else in the neighborhood? Did you get another hobby? What did you do to fill that that gap? Um, I guess I still just tried talking to her more. I'd send her more stuff. We'd still have calls. Um, I just tried to keep, still keep in good contact with her. So it shifted less face to face because you couldn't have that to phone calls and chat sessions and stuff like that. Yeah. So you were able to, for the most part, compensate for something like that. Yeah. Has there been something? some other kind of loneliness that happened that you couldn't compensate for that you had to learn how to deal with. Um, like for instance, we, we've had pets pass away on us. Now, anytime there's a death in the family and the pets are always members of the family, but anytime there's a death in the family, there's always a loneliness that's there, a familiarity that's not there anymore that causes a loneliness. You can't, 
easily replace that. How do you deal with something like that? Um, I guess with that, um, I try to, um, take comfort in the other cats we had. Okay. Um, I'd spend more time with them. Um, I would try petting them more. I'd ask them how their day was. Um, and basically just try to, you know, spend time with them. So it's almost like a, a physical injury. Right? So you've hurt your knees in the past just with marching band. So when you hurt your knees, what do you do? You don't you don't just sit there and not do anything. You find another way to get around. You know, you twist an ankle, you wind up limping, or you use crutches, or you you know, whatever it is. Loneliness is sort of like that too. When when you experience loneliness, you you can't just shut down. You know, you don't crawl into a ball in a corner somewhere and cry and, and, you know, give up on the world. You find a way to get around it. You, you know, you lean on something else. And whether that's a finding an alternative to what caused the loneliness or finding a new way to distract yourself from that loneliness, whatever it is, that loneliness is sort of like having a, an injured limb where, you can't put the same pressure on it that you had before because it hurts. So you find a way to compensate for it. And I think that's probably the most important takeaway here is that everyone's going to experience loneliness. You can't avoid it. As much as mommy and daddy want to shelter you, you're going to experience that at some point in time. The important thing is how you handle that. You know, how you compensate for that loneliness how you know how crippling is it to you and how quickly can you recover from it because just like a physical injury loneliness is something that you can recover from what do you think about that yeah i definitely think that's an accurate assessment to make because it is a good allegory because you're not really going to be the same afterwards and you're going to have that moment where it's like, okay, you kind of have to find alternative ways to deal with it or alternative ways to think and such, and eventually you will end up healing from it. Exactly. exactly. And you'll get stronger from it. You know, the first time you feel that loneliness, it can be overwhelming depending on the type of loneliness. Once you overcome that, the next time that happens, and, you know, I don't want to say it gets easier, but you get more capable of dealing with it. It's part of the, the process of growing up and maturing. Um, adversity makes us stronger. That's, that's kind of the best way to look at it. Anyway, I think that was all we had today. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we'll get your closing thoughts. All right. We'll be right back. All right, so I just wanted to let everyone know that loneliness is something that's going to happen to all of us no matter who we are. You can be the most outgoing, extroverted person, and you're still going to eventually feel lonely. And the best thing to take away from this is that you shouldn't give up on it. If you do feel as though you have chronic loneliness or are experiencing long-term symptoms of loneliness, yes, go and seek help because you're not... There is a way to deal with it. You're not going to immediately feel better and it's going to sting for a while, but you're going to find alternative ways of thinking and alternative ways to heal and eventually you'll come back stronger. Very good. Sage words as always. Uh, that was it for today. Before we do go, I would want to once again uh, invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find video and audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Things. Uh, we're on every place you can get a podcast. I'm not even going to list them. Uh, I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us suggestions on what you'd like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. 
You can find high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all that and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.